Hi, it's Naharika with another SAT Biology video. So today we're going to discuss cellular respiration. Really quickly, for those who are unfamiliar with the mitochondria or need a refresher, it is a double membraned organelle with an inner and an outer membrane. Within the inner membrane are folds called cristae, and the space within the inner membrane is known as the matrix. Now, the simplest way to conceptualize cellular respiration is by thinking of it as just a bunch of reactions that occur, and their end goal is to make adenosine triphosphate, which is ATP. ATP holds a high energy bond, which, when broken, will provide energy to the cell, and that's what it's always looking for. It's looking for more energy. Now, before diving in, it's also important to note that most of the energy made is stored in electron carriers, such as NAD+, and FAD. So now let's get started. Cellular respiration is broken into three-ish or four steps depending on who you talk to or what book you're reading. The equation you must memorize to understand cellular respiration is C6H12O6 plus 6O2 yields 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus ATP and usually heat. Cellular respiration begins with glycolysis, which by the stems means the breakdown or lysis of sugar or glucose. So in this case, it's breaking down it into two molecules of pyruvate. Note that it does take some energy to break down the sugar, so we also need two ATP to get this whole thing started. And in the end, we'll end up with a net of two ATP, two pyruvate molecules, and two NADH. This is the only step of cellular respiration that's anaerobic or doesn't require oxygen, and this occurs within the cytoplasm. The pyruvate made by glycolysis will then either go through the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex if it has oxygen or the fermentation process if it doesn't have oxygen. In the PDC, a group of enzymes prepare the pyruvate to enter the Krebs cycle, and this is because the Krebs cycle can only use molecules with two carbon atoms, but pyruvate right now has three. After removing one of the carbon atoms, PDC then attaches the remaining two carbon structure to coenzyme A, and during this process, another molecule of NADH is produced. Remember that because two pyruvates are produced in glycolysis, this cycle for PDC happens twice. So the products of one cycle is doubled, leaving us with two molecules of carbon dioxide, two molecules of acetyl-CoA, and two molecules of NADH. This step, along with the Krebs cycle, will occur in the matrix of the mitochondria. Next, we'll move on to the Krebs cycle, or what's also known as the citric acid cycle. Just like the PDC, the Krebs cycle runs twice for each glucose molecule made because we have two pyruvate, and it requires oxygen, meaning that it's aerobic. Acetyl-CoA is first combined with oxaloacetate to form citric acid, which is then broken down one carbon at a time and rearranged to form the original oxaloacetic acid molecule. Per glucose in the Krebs cycle, two molecules of carbon dioxide are produced, six molecules of NADH, two molecules of FADH2, and two molecules of ATP. Lastly is the electron transport train and oxidative phosphorylation. These two steps occur in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Because most of that energy is stored in the form of reduced electron carriers, here's where we use them to make more ATP. During the ETC, electrons travel from one carrier to the next in the chain until they reach oxygen and form water. This is why oxygen is called the electron, final electron acceptor. Energy is used from the electrons to actively transport hydrogen ions out of the mitochondrial matrix, and this creates a proton gradient. Then, the ATP synthase allows the hydrogen ions to passively diffuse back into the matrix, and this enzyme uses the energy created by the protons to phosphorylate an ADP to an ATP molecule. Now, the old electron carriers are free to accept more electrons from glycolysis, PDC, and the Krebs cycle, and ATP has been created. While the numbers vary, in total, cellular respiration will produce about 36 molecules of ATP per glucose. If there is no oxygen, PDC, the Krebs cycle, and the ETC cannot occur, but we still need the electron carriers to be empty in order for the cycle to continue. So in order to do this, cells undergo fermentation. During fermentation, NADH will give it to the elect During fermentation, NADH will give their electrons to pyruvate, and pyruvate can either be reduced to lactic acid in humans or in certain yeast through alcoholic fermentation, which produces ethanol and CO2. Now, the two problems with fermentation is, one, both ethanol and lactic acid can be harmful in large percentages, and secondly, instead of 36 ATP per glucose, only 2 ATP are produced per cycle. 